Okay, people, so you see Sky here. She's acting like a little raccoon. She's acting like Matilda. Where's Skya? Skya? That's why you're eating so fast. So that's what you're meowing for, right? Food? You're meowing for food? Who's a good girl? You're a good girl, Skya. You just act like Matilda. Just Matilda. She always eats fast. And you're just eating fast. And that's it. Bye. And we wheel him and then bump him down the stairs with the buggy because there's no way I'm going to be able to carry him. Okay, um, the camera's on now. Oh, come on. <laughs> Who's this? Spider Man. Spider Man. <laughs> Nothing but just a Spider Man. <laughs> It's a good thing that it's got muscles. Yeah. Spider-Man. Spider -Man. What are, where are we going? What are we doing? Huh? What are we doing? Oh, uh, we're going to go to the store. And buy what? Jars, smoke, maybe. <clears throat> oh, definitely jars. Yeah. Yeah. Just jars. And maybe maybe some. Liver's worth you wanted. Yeah. Oh. I Hold just on. like whatever works. Hold on, there we go. And we didn't even see his face. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Because he was disguised. He was disguised, eh? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Spider-Man. <coughs> Spider-Man. You got boogers. You got boogers. Mm. Yeah. Staya, what are you doing? Okay, you can turn that off. Okay. Okay, people, June 11th, 2020, <clears throat> guess who we have here? Now, apparently, apparently, the coroner came out with another report saying that 172 people OD'd and died in the province of <laughs> British Columbia, Canada. <laughs> Wow, right? In the month of uh, May, 172 people. I'm pretty sure that's what I heard, people. And this person is saying that the reason this is happening because of social distancing and the borders dried up with the drugs crossing over, although everybody knows that fentanyl comes in off the fucking boat, or it's being manufactured here in um, British Columbia, Canada, or it's coming straight out from the freaking hospitals and places like that, okay? Because this is being run, fentanyl is being run by fucking government people. You know, it's like a dispensary. They'll allow so much out in the community to kill off so many fucking people, just enough so that, you know, it doesn't warrant a, a complete uprise. If they killed off 90% of the population, then the 10% would be out there fighting till the bitter end. But if they only kill off 10% of the population, including the old people, right, in terms of medical kidnappings and putting them into, you know, rooms, locking them away like dirty secrets after they stole all their money and destroyed their lives, I mean, right, there's more than one way to skin a cat, okay? But what I'm trying to say is, you know, I <laughs> this woman's demure persona, but demure. At first, she comes out. What? Let you watch this because it's important to understand what we're dealing with out here. Because first of all, what she's saying in terms of the reason that there's more deaths is because the drugs can't cross the border and they're more polluted out here is a bunch of fucking hogwash because a couple years back people we had over 1500 people die directly from fentanyl and there was no coronavirus okay fentanyl has been around for a long time in British Columbia Canada as that money is being laundered through the housing market 
okay, in terms of illegal fentanyl sales. Not to mention the harvesting of the organs, whether by legal donation or whether by hook or by crook, with crooked cops and crooked coroners and crooked doctors and crooked hospitals with crooked MLAs and crooked lawyers protecting that crooked system because it's happening. So if 172 people died from uh, illicit overdose, they're not so much labeling it anymore with fentanyl because they're trying to steer away from the fentanyl per se because they know that they're running fentanyl through their freaking hospitals, people. Okay? And they know that the majority of the fentanyl comes from China, which is not crossing the border. It's coming in on a fucking airplane plane through Canada Post, or it's coming in on a bloody boat, or it's being manufactured here someplace out in the boonies. Okay? But you see, we're in a purge right now, people, because the government is desperate for money. I only have so much time to do things in a day. I calculated out the numbers when they had 1,500 deaths. I don't know if it was 2017. I think it was 2017, 2018. I think it was 2017. Right? And if 800 of those people out of 1,500 people were directly on welfare and they kicked off because of fentanyl, the government saved itself within a year, something like 38 or was it 19 million dollars and then it jumped up to 38 million dollars throw in another 800 deaths kick off the welfare rolls right because it's like compound interest it just gets you get richer and richer the government for every person that's on welfare whether it's full-time or part-time because again a lot of these guys who are dying are doing temp jobs through the construction and trades industry as basically they're struggling with homelessness and you know other issues right so you know at some point they're collecting welfare Right, whether some of them are long-term welfare recipients, or whether them, whether some of them are you, but we'll just say, eight hundred people, right, kick off the welfare roll within a year between giving those people, uh, you know, at that time it was three hundred and three hundred dollars for support for the month, and three seventy-five for shelter. So we'll just say six seventy-five per person times eight. 100 people per month, like you get into the millions of dollars of savings when they're dead. And that's not including harvesting their organs and selling them on the black market for pet food, for science experiments, for students and universities to play with, right? For a um, transplant for some person who bought it on the black web to ship them overseas for whatever purpose, because it's happening. So, 172 people died from drug overdose. They're not saying fentanyl, but you know it's fentanyl, right? In the month of May, in their province, as this woman, wants, girl, whatever, wants to get up there and say, oh, it's because the drugs are bad, uh, because they can't cross the border, which is, she's misleading the public. And she's also... Um, trying to blame it on the coronavirus in terms of they're having to social distance themselves because of, you know, the, the rules or whatever, or what they're, they're in their modules and, you know, and, but what about 2017 when we had over 1,500 deaths? I have it fucking printed out in one of these coroner reports, right? And of course, none of this is fact-checked in terms of were they cremated with their organs intact? Were they buried with their organs intact, or were their organs pillaged like Shemay? And more than likely, like Sierra, being hauled out in the back of a fucking coroner's van, a.k.a. that phantom car that bolted out of there as fast as it could because it had to rush, the driver had to rush Sierra's body to the Abbotsford Hospital to have a so-called forensic autopsy 
right? No, they needed an excuse to cut her open and take what they fucking wanted, right? So you can guarantee 172 people in their pro in this province had their fucking bodies pillaged, all right? So every time this person gets up on her podium, and because I'm going to show you, she's talking about, oh, well, we've got 14 new cases, blah, 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 and then she goes in to talk about the coroner's report that reported that there was 172 deaths, right? And then she, oh, but you know, oh, looking like she's ready to fucking cry. And then she acting like she's so emotional over those 172 deaths, when in the back of her mind, she's going ching ching, ching ching, ching ching, not only in the cost savings as to what the government saves by not paying out fucking welfare checks or having to put them up in these modules and all this other st health care and medicines, and they're saving, they're saving millions of dollars, right, off of the backs of these people that are dying like flies out here. And she's faking the funk, acting like she's so fucking upset. And as quick as she brought on her crocodile tears, I'm going to show you, all right? She goes on to the next subject, and it's a complete new slate with a whole different freaking demure. Because it's fake, people. We're in a purge right now. Sierra got released from jail and within four days, she was dead, with a lot of suspicion around her as they, like I said, threw in the back, threw her body in the back of a fucking coroner's vehicle, sped off with it, like the thieves that they are, right? And took what they wanted. And then it took me 19 days to identify my daughter's body as they publicly humiliated my family again on that doorstep. No, we're not talking about the video that I did. The video just documented how these people treat the public. Because if I wouldn't have had that video camera on, I still would have been standing on John so-called porch in the rain with that fucking six foot seven cop standing there guarding the door, whispering to the to the body boot dude guy as he's going down the fucking stairs saying, Did you get the cell? Did you get the stuff? Did you get the stuff? What's what stuff what stuff was the body dude guy supposed to get other than a fucking body? And he didn't even take the fucking body. They just moved the vehicle, their vehicles, so that that phantom car could drive out. As they hoodwinked my family, had the neighbors looking out their window with their back up, rolling up, you know, strutting up, right? Carrying on with their small talk as if it meant nothing that Sierra was so-called dead. But nobody can verify that. You can't trust the coroner. It's pretty fucking obvious with Shemay, right? You're not going to get the truth. The legislation denies you access to these reports. You can't get a secondary independent autopsy to verify that organs are even in the body, assuming, right, that they, right? They're not supposed to be taken out. They're junkies. Well, what was the hurry to take Sierra's body out so fucking fast? What's, what is John under suspicion for? No cop has told me what the fuck is going on. Right? Because they're making up their story as they go along like they did with Shemay. Just like they did with Uncle John. Right? Because it's all about money. So for this woman to get up there and fake the fucking funk and act like she's so upset that 172 fucking homeless people, basically... <laughs> right? That are on welfare, full-time or part-time. Doesn't matter. Right? Is she so upset? No, she not no fucking upset. Okay? Because as soon as she goes on to the next subject, she turns into like a f blank slate. And you wouldn't even have known that she was upset. Because it's fake. It's a show. Because in her mind, 172 people just saved the government a whole whack of money 
by disappearing into the abyss, not to mention making those crooks within the government, within the public union sector, a whole whack of fucking money. Because they're taking out those organs, people. That's why they don't stop this shit. It has nothing to do with the border. Because I've got fucking documentation to so show that in 2017, it was over 1,500 people died from fentanyl. There was no coronavirus. They were harvesting fucking people like they're still harvesting them. They just, they just, what did this coronavirus, all it did was make it fucking easier. That's all. Social distancing. Right? Have Narcan on you so that when you do drugs and OD, you can wake up as you're, you're dead now and fucking Narcan yourself as if it works like that. Going on about, oh, well, you know, they really need to admit that they have a problem and, you know, and talk to their family and talk to their friends and, you know, and blah and blah and blah and, you know, there was a, a slight drop, I think, in 2018 because it, 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 people congregated together and were Narcanning each other because on the strip, right, someone would holler, so-and-so's down. People would come and fucking Narcan them. There were people out there that lived out on the streets that Narcaned people as they were dropping like flies out there, people. That's the only reason the numbers went down from that 1,500. But then the government brought in the modules and made it so that people basically could only be in their room by themselves, knowing that people would continue to do drugs and die. But they didn't care, because they had a plan for those dead bodies. Not only were they saving money within that ministry, right, in terms of paying for those modules, paying for their support, paying for their medical costs, paying, paying, paying. They saved millions and millions and millions of dollars off of those deaths. But they also made millions and millions and millions of dollars off of selling those organs. Because that's what they're doing. And because you can't fact check anything. And most people are stuck on that stigma. Stigma. They're not going to follow up to see if their loved one has a heart in their body or a kidney or anything for that matter because we have been conditioned to not like drug addicts. Right? Anyway. Let's just listen to this. I wish I, I, honest to God, I wish I had more time on my hands to do things. Now, watch her demure. Seriously. Watch this person's demure. Look how nonchalant she is. An update today. We have 14 new people who have tested positive for COVID in British Columbia, bringing our total to 2,694 people. The point of this is to, to look at her demure. And that look, how she's, look how she's acting, the Vancouver Coastal reacting. 1,386 people in the Fraser Health Region, 130 people on Vancouver Island Health Region, 195 people in Interior She doesn't Health look region, too disturbed right now. In the Northern Health Region. Right? She's just relaying we have numbers. No new uh, outbreaks in healthcare settings today. Uh, though we did have the one new outbreak uh, that was identified yesterday, leaving us with uh, five active outbreaks. There's always going to be outbreaks, here. people. That's um, the plan. To date, we've had 560 people in the long-term care assisted living or acute care outbreaks that have been affected, including 341 <coughs> residents and 219 <coughs> staff. 
because everybody's sitting in a diaper. Um, we also continue to follow a number of clusters in the community. Um, and uh, That's what we, happens when you uh, offload. In particular, we know that there has right. been a cluster related Privatized to Pearl Lake. Uh, public Lake services. In Alberta, and uh, that one is thankfully winding down. It is not yet over. Sell but, off uh, the old people to the Chinese, like when you sell off the young people to the Chinese. That it will be uh, declared over. Um, early uh, young people week. get stuck with fentanyl. So we currently have 183 old people cases get kidnapped in and Columbia, forced into old folks' homes. And, five and have the life sucked out of them. ICU. We have no new deaths again today from COVID-19. And 2,344 people are now fully recovered. Okay, watch. And watch. There are a few things I'd like to speak to today. Look. Um, we have spoken before about the many unintended impacts of COVID-19 on, on people across British Columbia, um, both positive and negative impacts. And we have seen people in BC come together in kindness and support for each other. Just watch. But we've also seen tragedy. Um, mm. And as many as everybody knows here in BC, COVID-19 oh, is not our only as usual. health crisis. Uh, this as morning, everybody the BC knows, coroner's office announced 170 people in British Columbia died from overdoses in the month of May. Her voice is cracking. Did you hear that? Hold on. I don't know what I did, but anyway. To the living. What we do know about these recent deaths is that there has been a dramatic increase in the toxicity of the street drug supply here in British Columbia, and it is around the province. We are not only seeing people die in the downtown east side. This is... Surrey is the next location in terms of rounding up the dead. This is the case across BC. In southern Vancouver Island, in the interior, some of the highest rates that we've ever seen of people being affected. Natives. They're clearing out the land killing off the natives. A lot of them are on welfare, right? They want the land. They don't want the late natives fighting back and saying, don't put in the pipelines. ...by the toxic street drug supply. We also know that COVID-19 is forcing all of us to stay farther apart from others. That's a bunch of crock. In 2017, 17, they had over 1,500 fentanyl-related deaths. There was no COVID-19 in 2017. What there was, was a corrupt public union sector that was going ching-ching, ching-ching, ching-ching. And this can be very isolating for some people and gives it, um, it makes it more able for them to, to hide their drug use. Hide, do you see how she blames the victim? No, what you did, what they did, people, is they sweeped everybody up off the fucking streets, right? So that uh, they didn't have each other as a group to holler out that somebody was down so somebody could come and Narcan. Just because you have a Narcan kit doesn't mean that you can OD and Narcan yourself. It doesn't work like that, people. Somebody else has to Narcan you. If you OD. But they put everybody into modules to get them up off the street because of genification, right? I'm not saying that what they did was a bad thing in terms of getting people out of tents and putting them in the modules because a lot of people are happy with that because it's better than being in a tent. But at the same time, they didn't house everybody. Sierra never got a module. She needed a module, people, and she never got one. All those workers out there knew she needed it, but they did not give her one. And then when they did put people in these modules, the, 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 the big rule is you can't have people in with you for any length of time. You might have a sleepover once a week, but other than that, you're in there by yourself, in your own little cubicle, pretty much 24-7. So it's not like if you drop, the guy next to you on the street, in the tent, or standing across the street, and sees you drop, and then calls out 
somebody drop, everybody runs to Narcan. That's not happening anymore. There's nobody to witness these guys dropping or women. So these modules was a place for people basically to go and die. But of course the government doesn't want to take any responsibility for that. No, 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 because it's the it's the addicts that are have the issues, right? Or people who experiment with drugs or people who celebrate going to college based on an assumption that that's what they were doing before they got murdered with fentanyl, which we know the police and the coroner and hospitals and all these uh, essential workers completely ignore because there's too much money involved. from others, even if they might otherwise have reached out for help or been very careful about not using alone. We know that using alone right now is exceedingly deadly. Right now. <laughs> they accuse Shimei of doing drugs alone at 8 o'clock in the morning after talking to her sister for an hour as she was getting ready to go to sleep. And Shimei's sniffing cocaine. Yeah, my ass. The alarms of people missing have not been going off because we've been staying apart to do our best to try and manage. People going missing? What was that about? Did you hear that? What is she talking about? For help or been very careful about not using alone. We know that using alone right now is exceedingly deadly. The alarms of people missing have not been going off because we've been staying apart. The alarms of people going missing have not been going off because we've been staying apart. Does that even make any sense, people? To do our best to try and manage the other crises we're dealing with. It has been particularly hard. Other crises that we basically have within the old folks home because the BC Liberal government sold off and privatized half of the elderly care homes to the Chinese corporation that has a history of corruption, right, as they downsized with the workers so that the company could make a profit, so they could turn around and take that profit and then sell fentanyl in the community and then make more profit so they can build buildings that nobody can afford, right, because it just keeps the world going around heard in these last three months because we had been making such progress in addressing the many underlying <coughs> causes of the overdose crises. As we know, and I've said many times, it is a very complex crisis. There's no one single cause and there's no... Truth for Reality pointed out to me that, you know, it's very unusual to have two body dude guys show up at a crime scene Well. It wasn't a crime scene until after they took out Sierra's body through that phantom car. And then it became a crime scene because they wanted to, you know, scare her family away after they publicly humiliated us in the neighborhood with their backup, basically. But, um, you know, like really, who's who's going missing? I'd like to know who's going missing, people. Because maybe there was more than one dead body in that house. There was two two body dude guys with two different vehicles. With the cops saying, did you get the stuff? As the guy's walking down the stairs looking into a cell phone, smiling as he's doing hand signals. I haven't done that video yet. one single magic bullet that is going to solve that crisis. But we also know that um, there are a number of things that we have put in place and that we are doing that we're working. And since the COVID um, pandemic has hit us here in British Columbia, there were... Whatever they did, didn't work for Sierra. So in my opinion, it's hogwash. A number of other things that we've put in place, including guidelines for providing people with pharmaceutical alternatives to the street drug supply. 
So things like diacetylmorphine and hydromorphone and being prescribed those so that you reduce your dependence on this, the, the drug supply that we know <coughs> is killing people in this province. And we know that that saves lives. We know that we've been able to increase the number of people who have been prescribed safe drugs by 150 percent. And those are not the people who are dying. We know that this being able to access a safe supply of drugs is one way that we can connect with people who... Do you hear her voice breaking? ...use drugs. And it is connection that helps us address addiction. And it is connection that helps us, um, helps us overcome the many reasons why we use drugs. We know that it is multifactorial, that it has to do with pain, whether it's physical pain, psychic pain, whether it's emotional pain. And unless we connect with people, we don't have an opportunity to help them address those underlying causes. Why not just uh, get rid of the fentanyl? That might be a great fucking start. Or how about putting people in jail for life? I'm, I'm talking life, right? For murdering people with fentanyl, right? You know, like that would be a great start, but they don't address that, people, because it brings in too much money for the government on multiple levels, whether it's in savings or whether it's in extra cash. We know that overdose prevention sites and our supervised consumption sites work. We have not had any deaths at those sites. We know that drug checking works. It helps people to understand and take the precautions they need. We know that reaching out, that not using alone and carrying naloxone work. We must all use, show the compassion that we have shown in addressing the COVID crisis and the understanding for our families, our friends, and our workmates, all people who use drugs, and help them know that they can reach out for help. They can talk about this, that we have supports. We can help you. We know that She's always blaming the victims. She's always putting the onus on the victims. But she never holds the government to account for allowing those drugs to be in British Columbia like a permanent plague. As well, the safe housing that's been provided with the appropriate supports for many of the people who have been homeless, who've been in some of the very dangerous encounters. Do you see? The majority of people that are dying are the homeless that are collecting meager welfare checks, right? Some of them are in modules by themselves because that's the rule. Right? So in that situation, they would get an extra 375 for their module rent pad fee, right? One man's death is another man's treasure in multiples. Departments are also working to support people. Addiction and substance use are complex challenges, and as I've said, they're rooted in pain. We must eliminate the stigma and shame that leads people to be afraid to reach out, to tell their family, their friends, about their drug use. Well, first of all, you're dealing with a bunch of addicts sitting up in fucking modules, or they're out in the streets, or they're out on the construction site going home after work, and they're just doing what people do. Period. This is nothing new under the sun. Okay, I don't, like, she, she's like, ooh. It's uh, hold on. And we must all do our part to protect ourselves and our communities. We must all do our part to protect ourselves and our communities. But you know what? They're not protecting nobody, people. They're protecting their money. Because if they were protecting somebody, Uncle John wouldn't have had what happened to him. Shimei wouldn't have had what happened to her. Sierra wouldn't have had happen to what happened to her. And so on, and so on, and so on. Because it's impossible to protect yourself against fucking devils. And our loved ones. Eliminating stigma and shame. Half my loved ones are already dead. At the hands of the public union sector and their influence, their negative influence. A large part of that problem is around. Because they're money hungry. They gotta 
prop up their portfolios. Can't say it enough. People being afraid of being put in the criminal justice system. Well, we know what happens there. All you have to do is look at Sierra. And I have called for this before. We must look at alternatives to the criminal justice system to support people in getting the assistance they need. We have shown what we can do to look out for one another in COVID um, in BC. <coughs> and we know that the things that we are doing are saving lives. Today, a public service announcement has been released to let people know that support is available for you and encourage you to reach out, to connect, call in. Right, that's why there's 172 deaths. Multiply that by $400,000 per body in terms of organ harvesting. And you do the math, people. 400,000 times 172 deaths. That's a lot of hearts. That's a lot of kidneys. That's a lot of this and a lot of that. 811, talk to your provider. Find a safe prescription, prescription alternative to street drugs. Don't use alone. Have a buddy. Have a system. Try the app, the Lifeguard app, or call 911. Know the signs in your family and your friends. And check up on your friends. Does she honestly think that addicts are watching her? Right? As if they care what the provincial government is doing. Knowing that the provincial government doesn't give a rat's ass about them. Check up on those people, those uh, workmates that you have that you may not be seeing as often. This is another time that we need to, while physically apart, <sighs> connect with each other and support each other. Watch her demure change. There are two other issues I want to talk about. One is uh, that we've made some uh, revisions to uh, the order, the, the public health order around uh, restaurants, including... Uh, and people um, call me cold? Um, this is, uh, as we've said, we will update our orders as we need to, as we get some more experience and uh, the environmental health... So now we're going to update the order. The orders! It's not guidelines. They're not rules. They're not legislations. They're orders!